Hi friends, Amanda here from Fun Hands-On Learning. And today I'm going to show you eight different activities to practice graphing and data skills with the children that are around kindergarten and first grade level. So the first activity I have here is called Graph It, and it comes with these different cards that look like this. And what the kiddos are gonna do is they're gonna look at the pictures that are on the card and they're gonna graph what they see. So I'm, let me grab one for you to show you. And this, uh, this card has a picture here with some basketballs and some baseballs and some footballs. And what they're gonna do is they're gonna use any kind of manipulative you have available. I have today some erasers. Erasers are really great for this activity because you need something kind of small to fit into the squares to make a graph. And in fact, I happen to have in, whoops, excuse me, this um, eraser container, baseballs and footballs and basketball. So these are great. So what they're gonna do is they're going to look here. I have one, two, well, let's start with the baseballs. I have one, two, three, four baseballs. So they're going to go ahead and take the erasers and graph four baseballs. Then they're going to look at the footballs. Now you wouldn't, you don't, there's two footballs. You don't have to have, um, you know, little erasers that match the pictures, but it, is kind of fun that I do have them. So one, two, three, four, five basketballs. Okay, so then once they make their graph, like so, there's another card that goes along with it. So the card looks like this, and it says how many. So now they have to look at their graph, and they're gonna take a dry erase marker, and they're going to write how many for each part of their graph. So how many baseballs? There were four. How many footballs? There were two. And how many basketballs? There were five. And then they can kind of look and see, looking at their graph, that there were more basketballs than baseballs and footballs. Basketballs had the most, footballs had the least, and so on. So it begins questioning um, and data analysis and things like that. So that is this activity. So then they would just go on to the next one. So here I have um, a uh, graphic card with some dinosaurs on it. And obviously I don't have any dinosaurs, dinosaur erasers, so they could just use whatever they wanted when they were counting out you know, this one. So um, also, if you don't have the manipulatives to use, obviously they can just use their dry erase marker and color in the squares to match how many, because I laminated these, so I'm able to use them over and over again. And then once they finish their graph, obviously they're going to find the card then that matches, and they're going to, again, write how many for each dinosaur on their graph. So, that's the first activity. Let me show you the next one. Okay, the next activity center is um, graphing and data activity cards. So these cards, I keep them in bags, with the label on them because they come with a label. And these cards here work on four different types of graphs. So they're gonna work on bar graphs, they're gonna work on tally graphs, pictographs, and where's the other one? And pie graphs, okay? So what they're gonna do is they're going to use any kind of manipulative or a clip to mark their answer. So I'm gonna look at this pie graph. It says mark the one that has the most. I see that the chocolate bar is the favorite candy of most of the children or whoever they, <laughs> this is about favorite candy. So um, chocolate bar has the most, so I'm going to mark that chocolate bar had the most. I can use my clips or I can use um, manipulatives like my erasers or here I have some of these counting bears. I, the kids like using these because they sit up. So I'll show you how that works. So on this pie graph, it says mark the one that has the least. Favorite food, tacos was the least. So I'm going to take out the um, manipulative and mark it just like that. So um, let me show you another one. This one is a pictograph. So mark the one that has the most. I'm looking at the pictures. I have three penguins, five flamingos, and four toucans. Um, these are types of birds. So there were more um, flamingos. So I just go ahead and mark the one that had the most. And so that's how the kiddos are gonna do these. Let me show you, here's um, an example of a tally chart. So this was the weather, um, they tallied, and let's see, it says mark the one that has the most, the sun has the most, so I'm just gonna use, this time I'm gonna use some snack cubes to mark my answer. And I will just go ahead, the kids are just gonna put it right on there. And then here's an example of a bar graph. These were animals at the zoo. It says mark the one that has the most, I'm going to mark the tigers had the most. So, um, let me just show you some more examples. So here is a bar graph, pie graph. 
you can kind of see. Can you see that? Um, there's tally char. Here's pictograph, pictograph, tally chart, and bar graph. This so next activity, they are going to spin and build a monster graph. And so it comes with two pages like this. I already laminated mine. This this side has the spinner. And what you can use is you can use a, any kind of pencil you have and just make sure it has a good sharpened edge. And I like using these little um, clips that look like this. They work better than a regular paper clip, but you could also use a regular paper clip. And they're just gonna set it on there. Now this is if you don't have any spinners. You can also buy um, cheaply off of Amazon. They have packs of spinners that you can buy to um, attach to games like this. But if you don't have a spinner, you, this works just well. Okay, so they're going to take their pencil and they're gonna spin. And I landed on this monster, so I'm going to use a manipulative and build my graph. So um, this time I'm going to use these manipulatives. These have magnets on the back. They're just pom-poms. And I'm going to put it on that monster because he's the one I spun. And then you're, they're just going to do it again. So I'm going to spin again. And I landed on this guy. And so I'm going to take a pom-pom and put it on there. And they're just going to continue to spin until they have gotten one of their monsters all the way to the end so of their graph. So let's say I've spun enough times and my graph is finished, okay? I got one of my monsters all the way to the end. That means my graph is finished. So I'm gonna then go ahead and look back over here and use these cards. I have a card here for each monster. And I answer the questions. It says, this monster has the most. So the picture of this monster is gonna go in this picture frame. He had the most, and then this monster had the least. So I'm gonna look at my graph, and this monster has the least, least so he's gonna go in that picture frame. So that would be the last step is to answer the question. Now they could do this over and over again because every time they, they do it and they spin, they're going to probably make a different looking graph. And so they're gonna have a chance to do it more than once. All right, this next activity is called build a graph with snap cubes. So you need some snap cubes for this activity. Here are my snap cubes. All right, what the kids are gonna do is they are going to take a card and they're going to look at the, the color of the snap cubes on the card and build a graph. So I'm gonna look at my yellow ones first and it says that I need one, two, three, four yellow cubes. So I'm gonna go ahead, here's two, three, four. So this is my first bar, okay. Then I'm gonna look at the next one. It says I need three blue ones. So here I already have three. And then um, it says I need one, two, three, four, five red. So I have one, two, three, four, five. So, okay, take one off. All right, now I have five red. And then it finally says I need two brown. So I'm gonna take two brown. Okay, so I'm gonna put my graph together now, or put my cubes together like this, and I made a bar graph, you can see that. And then I'm going to use my card here that has the same colors on it to tally my graph. So the kids are gonna be working on not only making a bar graph, but then working on tallying. So I'm going to look at my um, colors here. My red, I have one, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five. My yellow, I have four. My brown, I have two. And the blue has three. So now I have not only made a bar graph, I've built a bar graph with my cubes, but then I have also tallied it. So, um, and then they can just continue on. There's lots of other cards and different color. There's two different color sets. So one color set looks like the one I built. And the other color set looks like this with black and orange and blue and green. Um, and so there are two, you know, tally your graph cards because they have to match the different colors. So um, they can just go on and there's lots of different options for making different graphs. Okay, this next activity I think is my favorite one only because I love the a theme I did. So I try to do different themes sometimes with my activities and this theme I did babies. I don't know how the students are gonna feel about it but I think it's super cute. And so um, what it is is there's two different options so you can use this activity twice. Um, there's graph number one or graph number two. All right, so I'm gonna just pull out graph number one. And then what you need is you need this card. This is the actual graph. And then at the end, um, after they graph it, you're gonna need this card. So, okay. So what they're gonna do is they're gonna look at their pictures and then they're going to graph it on their graph using any kind of manipulative you have. So, okay, my graph is now complete. So I used the pictures that were on here to make a graph. Then the children are going to use a dry erase marker and they're going to write the amount of 
each one on these little baby onesies, these little baby shirts down here. So there were three in this row. So I'm gonna write a three. There were five in this row. Four, one, two, and two. Okay, and then the last step is they're going to use this card and they're going to use clips to mark their answers. So it says this one has the most. They're gonna use this row to mark which one had the most. The rattle had the most, so they're gonna mark it. And then this one had the least. The um, bottles had the least, so they're going to mark it. And then they would be completed with this, um, this graph. And then, like I said, there's a second graph as well. So you could take it all off and do it again with the second graph and see what happened with that one. So, and they don't have to mark this with clips. I do like the clips on this one, but they could always mark their answer with um, pom-poms or whatever else you had laying around as well, okay? This next activity is um, making a pie graph. It's called Pie Graph Bakery. I keep it in that little bag there that you saw. And um, I got inspired to do a bakery theme with this one because I was thinking about pie graph and I was thinking about pies. <laughs> so uh, it has a mat that looks like this. It has um, the pie graph, the cards that look like this. And then it has one final card that they do at the end. Okay, so what they're gonna do is they, they can redo many different pie graphs. They just have to, first of all, grab a card. So I'm gonna grab this card here. And I'm going to graph by using the colors on here. So it says pies are black, uh, cakes are red, donuts are green, and the um, cookies are blue. All right, so I have my red, green, black, and blue dry erase markers. You do not have to laminate these. You could just do, and I even provide uh, black and white versions of everything. So if you don't have a color printer, that's fine too. If you don't laminate it, then they can just use crayons or so on like that. But since I laminated mine and I want them to reuse it over and over again, we're gonna use the dry erase markers. Okay, so I look at my card and I see there is one donut on my card, only one. So I'm going to color one slice of my pie graph green. And I'm just gonna kind of do this real fast. Okay, so you get the idea. They're gonna look at their card. I have one, two, three cakes. Cakes are red. So I'm gonna color three slices red. Obviously, they would hopefully do it a little bit neater than this. I only have one cookie on this one. So let's see, I'm gonna have one slice blue. And then I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pies. So the pies are black. So the rest of my slices here of my pie graph are gonna be black. I'm just doing it super fast. Okay, so then let's say they're finished with, you know, making their pie graph. The last part is to use their card. This one has the most. Well, my pies had the most, so I'm gonna clip that one. And this one had the least. Well, there are two that have the least. So I would need two clips and I would clip, let's see, the cookies and the donuts. Both only had one. So I would clip here and I don't have another clip, but you get the idea. I would need another clip. And I would, so I would clip two here and then the pie would be clipped up here. All right, so, or I can mark my answers with manipulatives. So the children could go ahead and the pie had the most, and then in this row, which ones had the least? The donut and the cookie both had one. So um, that is just one example. There are lots of different cards here, so they could just pick another card and do it all over again. This activity is called Crayon Grab and Graph. So I have some crayon cards here and they're all kind of mixed up. And I'm gonna put them upside down, like so. And the children are going to grab a crayon and graph it. So I'm gonna grab a crayon. I, have, I got yellow. So I'm going to use these colorful bears I have here to graph. So I got yellow, then I'm gonna go again. Here I picked a red one, so I'm gonna go. And you're, the kids are gonna keep on going. Here I got green. They're gonna keep going until one of their, um, colors gets to the end. I got blue. All right. Oops, I got blue. Green. Okay, I finished my graph. 
um, they are finished once one of the colors gets to the end. So then they're going to look at this mat and they're going to write how many they had for each one. So I'm going to take a dry erase marker here and I'm going to write I had five yellow, I had one red, I had two green, and I had three blue. You see that? And so then they can just erase it and do it all over again. Now, another way to do it, if you don't want to use these cards that I've provided, if you have enough regular real crayons, you could have them do it that way. So you could put a big pile of crayons. You would need yellows, reds, greens, and blues, and you need a big pile of them, and then they would just grab and, and graph that way. Or you could hide them in like a cup so that they, they, they couldn't see them, and then they pull it out to see what color it is. All right, this last graphing activity is called food graphing. And I made two different sets so that the children could do it more than once. So these set of cards say graph one and these set of cards say graph two. So I'm just gonna grab um, graph one okay, card. So what they have to do is they have to look at the different cards and then they have to use a manipulative to graph them. So I used some snap cubes and I just looked at the cards so that bananas had one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. I put five snap cubes on my graph and so on. The grapes had three, the apples had four, you get the idea. So this is what my graph looked like when I was finished. And then, actually, the apples had four. I did not do that right. So the apples should have four. All right, okay, so now it's graphed properly. Okay, so then after they have finished the graph, then they're gonna look at this mat here and they have to tally their graph and then answer the two questions. So I would tally my graph, I have four apples, I had three grapes, five bananas, and two strawberries. So this is teaching children how to graph. Um, how to do make a bar graph, but then also how to graph it with tallying. So how to count with tallies. Two, three, four, and then one. All right, and then the last thing I had to have to do, let's move my graph out of the way, is answer the questions. Now I can answer the questions just by looking at my tallies if I want. All right, this one has the most. Well, the bananas had the most. So I'm gonna color in the banana. And then this one had the least. In this graph, the carrot had the least. I'm gonna color that in. So. There is also a second set of graphing cards. And so they could erase this. And then if you had time, you could do it again or do it another day with the new set of cards and it would make a totally different graph. All right, that is it guys. Thank you so much for watching. This has been a video from Fun Hands On Learning. I will leave links below where you can download all of these activities that you saw in this video today. They are from my Early Learners Math Curriculum, Unit 9 on Graphing and Data. These activities are great for kindergarten or first grade students, or especially special needs students who need hands-on activities. So, all right guys, um, we will see you next time. Bye.